Hello, this is Julian with Coffer Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the Tima Wash Process Ethiopia from Blind Tiger Coffee. And there's the bag right there. And Blind Tiger, based out of Old Town, Maine. And they're a coffee roaster that's appeared on this channel multiple times before, including last year when we reviewed their Buku Saisa, a wash process Ethiopia I enjoyed so much. It ended up on our top 10 coffees of 2022 list. So it's safe to say that I've been a big fan of their washed Ethiopians in the past. I also wanted to give a shout out to the owner, Charlie, if he's watching, as he's commented on our videos in the past. Hope all's going well. And I'm looking forward to discussing another blind tiger coffee as this right here is day 29. And recipe we went with for this coffee was our standard recipe, which is a 16 to one water to coffee ratio, brewed at 96 degrees Celsius, about 205 degrees Fahrenheit. We like this one best through the Chemex, which indicates a more medium grind. Roast profile for this coffee. So the best way I can describe Blind Tiger's coffees is that they're on the lighter side of that traditional American profile. That's essentially to say that they're not quite as developed as some of the coffees that Onyx and Sweet Bloom are releasing. In fact, I'd actually say that they're a little lighter than some of the coffees that Sweet Bloom used to release as well. That being said, they are a little bit more developed than the majority of the coffees that we do review from Passenger. So hopefully that gives you a good ballpark in that light medium range. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 12, first impression, and we opted for the V60 with this try, and it actually came out quite nice, as it was a little citric forward at the forefront, but it offered plenty of classic Ethiopian characteristics, with the most distinct thing being this candied attribute in multiple directions, that being in the honey and lemon sense. There's a very slight toffee aspect to the cup as well, but a fair bit of florality in the finish, giving it a pretty sweet and pretty coffee in general on that first try. Day 15 opted for the Chemex, and this yielded some more typical Ethiopian characteristics that you might have expected, with a vibrant candied florality on this day, as it does offer a slight citric and honey component as well, but the florality actually remained the most dominant aspect of the cup, especially on this day. So this one was slightly better, liked the second try. We continue on to day 17, opted for the April Brewer, and there was actually a fair bit of depth to this cup, as it offered a near bitter wild honey component to it with a much brighter floral component as well. There is a wonderfully defined peachy finish to the cup, but it is slightly bitter in terms of this lingering honey aspect and a little bit of a heavily complementary lemon aspect to it as well. It's pretty solid. I think that a lot of these notes are going to be similar to some of the other experiences we have. However, this had just a little bit more definition and vibrancy to it in general. So the April Brewer is something that might be worth checking out on multiple occasions. Felt like it was a pretty interesting cup on that day. Day 19, lowered the temperatures back through the Chemex and this honestly yielded some mixed results as it felt like it was helping the focus of the cup ever so slightly. However, it was skewing it a lot more in the citric direction. In addition to that, the cooldown was offering more of those candied aspects with the listed honey continuing to feel very much prominent and also very candied to the cup as well. There's significantly less of the floral aspects with a heavier emphasis on the citrus. So as a result, not necessarily ideal for me. Felt some adjustments were going to be required. Day 21 made the same adjustments to the V60 to see what sort of results we were gonna get with this brew method. And it yielded pretty similar results with a mostly citric forward cup and plenty of those candied lemon aspects and honeyed finish yet again. There's a little bit of the florality, but it's dissipated a fair bit relative to some of the earlier experiences. Might shift the cup in the other direction to see if I can get a little bit more out of it, but this was a little bit more tame and moderate than I might've been hoping for from this coffee. Day 23, ramped up the temperatures, a bit more fine of a grind, and I did notice significant improvement on this day from some of the earlier experiences as the florality is much more notable and prominent on this day. Much more of those softer kind of white flower aspects to this one. Previously found peachy aspect is present yet again in a much more prominent sense with the honey and lemon also being one of the more pronounced characteristics within this cup. So just a lot more vibrancy and a lot more just, we'll say sweetness in general. Day 25, another try through the V60, and this is when I determined that I had a pretty significant preference towards the Chemex as this just appeared to offer a little less definition in general. There's some of those floral aspects present once again, a long lasting lemon candy and the honey component 
dominating the cup, so having those things be the most dominant factors in it wasn't necessarily ideal. I was looking for a lot more of those floral and peachy aspects to it. Day 27, back to the standard recipe with the Chemex, and there are some ever so slight consistency issues with this cup. However, one thing that I found to be consistent is my preference for this brew method as every single time I made the adjustments with the exception of the lower temperature days, I had a stronger preference towards the Chemex for this coffee in general because they seem to offer two different cups. The V16 having a little bit more of the lemon and honey aspect while the Chemex having a little bit more of the floral and peachy aspect. So that made it a very clear winner for me on which brew method I preferred for this one. Day 27 yielded that result one more time. All right. Let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting. We have quite a few level fours. So let's run through those real quick and we'll start with the cleanliness level four. Yes, washed Ethiopian coffee. It's probably second only to washed Panamanian coffees, but even then plenty of clarity right from start to finish. Don't necessarily have too much to say on that. Higher side of level four, some great definition, especially when run through the Chemex. Finish level four. Yes, and the finish at times could be a little different. So on certain days with certain adjustments, it was a little bit more in terms of the floral sense. But for the most part, I would say that this coffee offered plenty of those citric as well as honeyed aspects to it within the finish. Kind of mixed feelings on that other side of things, but when I was getting a little bit more of those floral aspects in the finish, very nice in that sense. Sweetness, level four. Yes, and one of the biggest compliments I can play to pay to Blind Tiger Coffee is that their Ethiopian coffees tend to be pretty vibrant, especially relative to a lot of other coffee roasters, and that's the case with this one as well, as this offered plenty of sweetness. Every single washed Ethiopian coffee I've had from Blind Tiger has not lacked for vibrancy in general, and that's displayed right here with the sweetness being at that level four mark, so credit to them on that. Acidity, level four. Yes, and there was surprisingly a little bit more brightness than I might have expected, and that could have been attributed to a lot of those citric aspects that I'm experiencing from this cup, as it felt like it had a fair bit of this citric brightness right from the onset. So something that may have scored a little higher than I was expecting going into it, but it did feel like it justified that level four mark. Florality, level four. Yes, and going into this one, I thought that there was maybe an outside chance this could score that level five, as the descriptor on it is floral as heck. So I was expecting some very strong floral aspects to it, but honestly, it was a little inconsistent in that regard. The Chemex really seemed to accentuate a lot of those qualities, but other adjustments didn't also have that same result. So kind of mixed feelings on it. Definitely one of the more prominent factors and aspects in this coffee. So level four definitely feels justified. Citrus fruit, level four. Yes, and that's the other one on the other side of things as there was plenty of the citric aspects to this coffee. Possibly the most consistent and abundant aspect to it as well, because even when I was brewing it with both brew methods, it seemed to be at the forefront of this coffee, if maybe a little less present and prominent through the Chemex, still very much one of the most pronounced characteristics, more so than the florality was in the V60. And then we have one level three, and that is the stone fruit level three. Yes, and this tasting wheel was made with the Chemex, so that peachy aspect was a little bit more present, prominent, and pronounced through this brew method. Interestingly enough, that kind of toffee experience that I had from the first day, I would say that's attributed a bit better to the V60. So this one's scoring the level two on that caramel side of things. It would have been very generous to score to level three through the V60, but at least at the higher side, it would have been on that level two. And then the only other thing that's worth discussing in this tasting wheel is the body level two. I think that's kind of fully expected, especially the origin processing method, brew method we all went with. So washed Ethiopian coffee in the Chemex, you're definitely going to be expecting a lighter body. So add a little bit of texture to it, which is why it scored at that level two mark. So as I'm kind of looking at this tasting wheel, it's very easy to run through. And I do think it's a pretty good representation of what I was getting from this coffee. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee. It's not quite as good as the Buku Saisa. I think a lot of people know that I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of citric coffees in general. So this one didn't necessarily hit the mark for me in that regard, but I've already paid a really nice compliment to Blind Tiger about this coffee specifically, and that's that their washed Ethiopian coffees continue to yield some great vibrancy to it. And that's where I'm kind of going with this one is, I like this coffee. And that continues to be the trend with Blind Tiger's washed Ethiopian coffees. Another really nice compliment I can pay about this coffee roaster is I do find them to be one of the most underrated coffee roasters in the United States. Their coffees aren't necessarily that expensive, and in addition to that, you do get some really nice sweetness from these coffees, which is something that I'm always looking for. 
For what they are in terms of the category, there's a reason I scored them so high in our tier list, and that's because they offer tremendous potential. This coffee roaster, as well as the coffees that they do release, just have this nice complexity, some nice depth to them in general. And this coffee right here is no exception. The other Ethiopian coffee that they released this year, I think this says that this is their second washed Ethiopia. I tried that one. That one was very ginger forward, and a lot of people know I like ginger even less than citrus. So that one wasn't my cup either, but it continued to yield those same results. Very vibrant coffees. It skewed very strong in that direction. So if you're looking for those more vibrant washed Ethiopian coffees in the sort of light medium American profile that this coffee has, I think this is a really good fit, which perfectly leads into the type of person I would suggest this coffee to, exactly that. So somebody that does enjoy specifically their florals and citric components in it. Pretty straightforward in that regard as that's all the notes that they have listed on here. But in addition to that, it does have some really nice vibrancy to it. It does have some great clarity to it. And that profile that I've been alluded to that this entire time, that more kind of light medium sort of profile to it, I think they do an exceptional job with that, which is to say that not necessarily all of these super light coffees are going to be my favorite. When I find something in this category that offers enough of the things to balance out the fact that it's not necessarily the lightest coffee, still pretty light by most people's standards, but not necessarily an overly light coffee, if they're done really well, they can be some extremely nice coffees as is the case with this one right here. So overall, I would say that this one was just pretty solid for me. I think for the most part, that's the best way I can leave this review. If you've by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee, I'd love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And this right here has been a review of the Tima Wash Processed Ethiopia from Blind Tiger Coffee. Thank you for watching.